History says she went mad over love, but history can lie. Discover the truth of the last queen. Midnight has become my favorite hour. The sounds of the night are less intrusive. The shadows like a familiar embrace. Only now, in this quiet hour, when all those who surround me have surrendered to sleep, do I see clearly. It is a consolation, the knowledge, a gift I do not wish to squander. History may not forgive, but I must. Juana of Castile is one of history's most haunting figures. A princess whose passions led to a dynastic battle that shaped history and led her to an ultimately tragic fate. Known as Juana la Loca, the Mad Queen of Spain, who was this enigmatic woman? Juana of Castile was the last queen of Spanish blood to inherit the throne. Outside of Spain, she's barely known, which always surprises me because she was the mother of the Emperor Charles V and the sister of Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII's first wife. Her parents were Isabel and Fernando, the Catholic monarchs of Spain. She's an important historical figure, not only because with her demise, Spain passed into foreign hands, but also because so many of the men around her contrived to keep the truth a secret. Juana posed a threat. She had the potential to overturn their entire world. For years after her death, the secret surrounding Juana continued, even as her legend permeated Castile. In this vast, arid land, crowned by stone citadels and walled cities, no one questioned the story of the queen, who was forgotten by the world. History says she could never have ruled, but history can deceive. History is rarely kind to women, particularly women in power. It is often said that Juana was mentally unstable, even in her childhood. I must say, I found no real evidence of this. In fact, her mother, Queen Isabella, selected Juana at the age of 16 to go to Flanders to wed Philip of Habsburg, a vital dynastic union for Spain. Isabella had three other daughters. Why choose Juana if she wasn't up to the task? It's also interesting to note that during Franco's dictatorship, some of the historical documents in the Simancas archives were restricted to scholars who required special permission to access them. Documents pertaining to Juana were included in these restrictions. Hundreds of years after her death, the government still found it necessary to hide evidence about her. It is one of the supreme ironies of history and a testament to the efficacy of 16th century propaganda that a queen who is famous for having gone mad over love may have been anything but. I have done what was required to save my realm. Now I face a choice that could free me or condemn me forever. A means of escape that could seem to prove I am indeed as mad as they claim. But I have my reason, incomprehensible as it may seem. When I first started writing about Juana, I believed she was an eccentric, possibly unstable queen who should never have been thrust into the situation she was in. I sympathized with her plight, but I didn't see the full picture. After six years of research and several trips to Spain, during which I walked the road she took and saw the places she lived in, it became clear to me that there was far more to her story than we've been told. Juana deserves the chance to tell her side. She wasn't a victim. She's actually very contemporary in her struggle between life and duty, betrayal and love. She was a wife, a mother, a daughter. But first, she was a woman who was denied her voice. The time has come to let her speak.